Hello everyone. In this INR number 84, we are going to discuss about infective endocarditis. So what are the causative organisms for the infective endocarditis? See the name itself is telling infective endocarditis means endocardium is having inflammation or infection. So there are three group of the uh, infective endocarditis. We are going to divide them into native valve, into the prosthetic valve and into the uh, those people who are having IV drug abuse. Right. So these are the three categories, native wall, prosthetic wall and IV drug abusers. So in native wall, we are going to divide them into two broader categories, community acquired or nosocomial infection. Right. So when we talk, talk about community acquired, so community acquired can be in infants and overall. So what is the most common in community acquired infants is staph aureus. For community acquired native wall infective endocarditis, overall most common will be streptococci. That is the point you have to remember. Community acquired most common is streptococci. If they ask you particularly about the infants, then they will say you will say staph aureus, right? Nosocomial. So native wall nosocomial means hospital acquired. Then your answer will be staph aureus. So infants staph aureus, nosocomial staph aureus. But community acquired overall will be streptococci, right? Coming to the prosthetic valve, prosthetic valve less than one year will be coagulase negative staph epidermidis and more than one year age group will be streptococci. So that is what you have to remember, prosthetic valve less than one year or more than one year time of the prosthetic valve replacement, right? Within one year of the replacement, coagulase negative staph epidermidis and more than one year is streptococci. In case of IV drug abuser, right and left, these are the two sides of the heart, right side of the heart, staph aureus, which is the most commonly affected and left side will be by enterococci. So what we need to remember that in IV drug abuser, right side is most commonly affected and that is why most common overall will be the staph aureus, right? So for diagnosis of the uh, uh, infective endocarditis, we use modified Duke's criteria, which is a very important point for exam point of view, right? So we can remember this major and minor criteria, major criteria B and minor criteria timer. So this is the mnemonic B timer. This is the mnemonic for major modified Duke criteria, right? So modified Duke criteria major is B minor is timer. So what is B? B, A, B for blood culture, which will be positive. E is echocardiographic evidence of the endocardial involvement. So endocardium has been involved that we will see by echocardiography and then in minor criteria. So major criteria we have only two things blood culture and echocardio minor criteria we are having five things timer right. So what are these five things T for temperature means fever fever will be more than 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or more than 38 degree Celsius. I is for immunologic phenomena. Immunologic phenomena will be shown as a glomerulonephritis, Osler's nodes, Roth's spots or rheumatoid factor. Right. So I will show you all these things later on. So right now focus on the points. I is for immunological phenomena where you have glomerulonephritis, Osler nodes, Roth's spots and rheumatoid factor. M is for microbiologic evidence where you will see positive blood culture but not meeting the major criteria, right? So positive blood culture, but not meeting the major criteria. Major criteria, we will be having group of organism which will be positive here. It will be not that one. They will be different from that, right? Like a coxiella will be positive here, right? There will be streptococci, staph, all these things will be positive here. It will be not, not these away from this coxiella will be positive. So that is what I'm saying. Microbiological evidence, positive blood culture, which will be not meeting the major criteria. Right. E is for embolic phenomena. So what is embolic phenomena from the major arterial emboli? So it can be a septic pulmonary infarcts, mycotic aneurysm or intracranial hemorrhages. Right. And it can also have conjunctival hemorrhages or Janeway lesion. So there are two things we are seeing immunological phenomena and embolic phenomena, which I will show you the images also. And the final thing R is for risk factor. So predisposing heart conditions or injection drug abuse or use. So these are the five things in the minor criteria. So what are the five things? This was the older question. This is the PYQ. Fever is in minor criteria. Remember fever is in minor criteria. Ostler nodes, right? 
genuine lesion all these are minor lesion so what will be the definite endocarditis diagnosis when you will have a two major criteria either these two major criteria should be present or one major criteria and three minor criteria right so one here and three minor out of the five will be the another definitive diagnosis for the endocarditis or all five minor criteria should be present suppose you are not finding any of them all five minor criteria should be present to say that it is a infective endocarditis so now look at these infective endocarditis signs which are because of immunological phenomena so immunological phenomena i am showing you roth spot ossular nodes in the fingers glomerulonephritis and rheumatoid factor right so these are the four things we have to focus on roth spot ossular nodes glomerulonephritis and rheumatoid factor what is roth spot you can see all these are roth spots these are retinal hemorrhage r for roth r for retinal hemorrhage so these retinal hemorrhage roth spot is a retinal hemorrhage this is immunological phenomena and this was a pyq where you will see them in diabetes and leukemia also you can see this right so now you understand so please remember diabetes and leukemia these are the earlier mcqs also where you will find the roth spot right so diabetes leukemia hypertension and endocarditis which we are seeing here and in the fingers you can see this is the ostler's nodes ostler's nodes are painful red finger toes or uh, uh, lesion see they are painful remember ostler o for ostler o for ouch right ouch is a painful and right? so ouch means it's a you know symbol for the painful thing so it's a kind of mnemonic right so it's a mnemonic ostler will be ouch ouch painful so ostler will be painful uh, lesion in the fingers right glomerulonephritis you will see that glomerulonephritis and that rheumatoid factor will be also positive in these cases right so these are immunological finding roth is spot in the retina ostler node in the fingers or toes glomerulonephritis in the kidney and rheumatoid factor in the joint now coming to see the infective endocarditis vascular or embolic phenomena so what are the vascular phenomena conjunctival hemorrhage right so you will see the multiple conjunctival petechial hemorrhages on the lower palpebra right so conjunctival hemorrhage splinter hemorrhages right so you can see the linear hemorrhages in the nail bed so these are splinter hemorrhages so linear hemorrhagic lesion on the nail bed and then janway lesion see janway lesion in the palm so this is again uh, similar to the ostler but ostler is painful ouch ouch janway is pain away so this is the mnemonic janway pain away right so that is what we used to remember that janway pain away painless lesion in the fingers we will be having janway lesion then pulmonary infarct this is the another important reason for the red or hemorrhagic infarct will be seen here so you can see red infarct is there and then mycotic aneurysm this will be the another finding so these are these are five important immunology uh, sorry vascular or embolic phenomena right conjunctival hemorrhage splinter hemorrhage janway lesion pulmonary infarct and mycotic aneurysm so keep revising all these topic for your exam this is again very important especially that modified due criteria and these vascular and immunological phenomena best wishes for your exams